So I'm back today with another update on the crew cab build. This is all that is left of the parts truck. Uh, I did some things that may upset some people, but at the end of the day, this is the plan all along. So I ended up parting out the 2011 F-250 and I kept the frame. Uh, I sold the cab, motor, transmission, transfer case, and pretty much almost tripled my money for what I had in it. Um, since the wife, my wife, had the baby, I've been pretty much grounded, can't come outside, can't uh, work on my stuff because she needs help inside with the kids, you know, obviously. So um, I do what I can and I've started designing the suspension mounts for the bag setup. So I drew these out and I sent them over to my buddy and he cut them out on his plasma table. But this here is the rear mount and control arm bracket for the back. So that'll get welded onto the axle. The bag will sit there and will be bolted directly to the bottom side of the frame. Uh, <laughs> check this out. I don't know if the previous owner welded this or if he had a shop do this, but look at all of those boogers. I mean, that's insane that somebody put this on a gooseneck hitch and deemed it acceptable. Yeah, it's bolted, but <laughs> I mean, come on. It's disgusting. You know, I'm by no means a professional welder, but I can tell you right now that my welds don't look like that. <laughs> uh, but anyway so yeah i got the back done and i designed a center section cradle subframe assembly whatever you want to call it for the middle of the truck um the back is getting triangulated a triangulated four link so instead of two bars coming up going to the cradle that seems to be pretty popular. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I don't really like that design. So what I'm going to do is just one bar up to the center. And then I'm going to run a small truss. Uh, it's like they're low profile from Barnes four wheel drive. I'm going to get that. And then I'm going to put a, a control arm at the top of the pumpkin at an angle. And it should end up right about in here. So from what I've learned with building Jeeps, and that bag truck I did. Um, just a good starting point for the rear suspension is to have the upper control arm 75% of the lower control arm. So the lower one should be 58 inches from the mount to the axle. Same with the front. Um, so roughly 75% of that is like 43 inches, I think. And that basically puts that right here. So this wheelbase of this truck is six and a half inches longer than the blue crew cab. Um, so what I'm gonna do is Z-notch, look out bear, you're in the way. I'm gonna Z-notch the frame. This center cab mount is getting cut off and then we're going to cut the frame like that, do it again and take out six and a half inches. This will slide forward this will get re-welded and then that cradle will act as a fish plate. We'll go over top of this. It'll be bolted and I may even weld it. We're not, I'm not too entirely sure yet, but it'll be 32 inches wide at the mounts. It should hang down four inches below the frame. So it's, you know, this thing is not going to be super tall. Um, and I didn't want a bunch of stuff hanging down below the frame. Um, so it'll be roughly here and then it'll kind of swoop up to 24 inches wide at the top of the frame um so yeah that's for the back the back's pretty simple um i've actually got a, a separate bmw i think is what it is um gooseneck hitch for that i'm going to cut that off and put mine on because i don't want that on my truck uh obviously when you do that the 
leaf springs are gonna go away and I've designed this to be such a way with the bags I'm getting. They are eight inch travel bags. And with the truck fully aired out with this amount of spacing, the fenders on the truck should sit an inch above the tire for 35s. Um, so that'll be perfect. That's what I want for the back. Then for the front, I went ahead and took the coil springs out just to try and look and test and everything. And from what I'm seeing, this is just about as perfect as it can get. So it's sitting on the factory truck bump stops. Um, for the front, it's gonna be bagged as well. I am running a radius arm in the front. So similar to this design, except it'll be uh, DOM tubing. It'll be two inch, quarter inch wall DOM tubing and I'm going to run the top bar straight and long, and then the bottom bar is gonna come up and weld a bracket on that and be a radius arm like that. Um, that actually will save me a good inch of axle movement forward and backwards versus having a lower link coming up and then the top one coming down. So you want your control arms is well not as long as possible but you want them as flat as possible and longer the better so i learned that with the white truck i built i built them too short and too steep of an angle so when you aired it out the wheel was center of the wheel well but when you air up the wheel will rotate like that and then it gets out of center so those the better the straighter you have those control arms Parallel to the ground, the less like or the less the axle will move forward and backwards. Um, so let's show you here. So this is the front bag mount I have. These I bought these actually for the white truck, the old body style uh, GMC that I have. But I ended up selling that thing unfinished. So I still got to do a little bit more work on that. But that's a different story. So these are the bags I have for it. These are a 12 inch travel bag. It has an 8 inch diameter bottom and i'd like to change that i'm going to see if i can talk with somebody locally to get a 3d printed part of this done because uh, it looks like it's going to be too wide now that i've already got them so anyways um that is going to be bolted in there so i'm going to reuse the factory mounting hole here i had my i drew these out of cardboard and sent them over to him and he cut them out. So that will go there. Then this, and obviously one on the other side, will go right here. I still need to adjust these just a little bit because I don't know, as you can tell, they don't really sit level. I'd like for them to be like that. And the angles are a little off. So I'm gonna have to redo this one, but they'll sit like that. Obviously this piece will get welded to that. Then this whole piece will be bolted to the knuckle or the, the axle itself. So then you can unbolt them and, you know, change ball joints and service that. The single bolt hole there lines up with that bolt. So it'll be bolted in. And then this, I'm gonna have to have recut as well. Apparently I can't read a tape measure, but my <laughs> bolt hole center width is off like half an inch or so. So let me get these recut, but the bag will obviously bolt to this disc. I'll have some sort of either uh, metal bracing or some DOM tubing or something inside of this. And that will get welded to this piece, it'd be like that. And then this Bradford Customs will wrap around this spacer. So that way you can't see the bolts for the bag. You won't see the airline. And I, I even thought about putting like a light inside of this. So at night this lights up 
So that should be pretty cool when that gets done. And that will sit right in here in the factory uh, coil spring perch. So what I have to do is this little puck here is just held in with three welds. I'll cut that out and then I'll have to drill two holes for that to sit up in there. Obviously it'll be on the bottom side, but you get the idea. It'll be bolted there. And then I'm gonna sneak the airline in like right through this corner or something. So you can't see it at all. It'll look nice and clean. And then when you peek down on the side, you'll see the Bradford Customs. It'll look all nice. And then obviously when I air up, you'll see the bag and everything. But the way this height is set up, it's gonna be perfect with the back for just from the, the quick measurements I've taken from the ground to the bottom of the frame. Obviously this isn't perfectly flat and I may have to make some slight adjustments, but this is almost perfect for what I need to do. So all these have been done. This has been a bunch of work sitting on the couch on the table after dinner and designing those up, drawing everything like that. Um, so super excited how those have turned out. For the track bar, I'm designing, I have it, I'm still working on the paper version of this, but I dropped it all the way down. You want a track bar as flat as possible as well, because if you start out with it super angled as it goes through, it'll push the axle side to side a lot more than if it's flat at half travel. So that's what I've learned. I bought a, uh, a book on air designing air suspensions. I've read over it a couple of times and a lot of great information in that. But so yeah, back to what I was saying. I can go three and a half inches out from the axle and just at seven inches up. Uh, I'll probably go six and a half just to give me just a little bit of space for this bump stop compressing and whatever, just to make sure I got enough space and nothing hits. But from the quick measurements I've taken with the track bar moved up to here, it should be at ride height flat or parallel to the ground and fully aired out. I don't think it will hit here, but if it does, I can simply add a little bend in it. That's no big deal. Um, I'm also ordering from Barnes a high steer kit so it'll weld to the knuckle and we'll move both of these like this and we'll put the pretty much square top level of the knuckle itself. So that'll get me pretty much dead nut level with the track bar and you want your drag link and your track bar to be on the same plane going like that because if they're, you know, if they're coming in at different angles, uh, you could have pretty bad bump steer at speeds. Um, so trying to get this thing set up right and set up to where it'll last. Um, so yeah, like I said, I wanted originally when I bought this truck, I don't know if I went through the full story, but when I bought the blue truck, I wanted to eventually put it on an 05 or newer chassis. Um, Cause I wanted the nice four wheel drive. I wanted modern steering. I wanted modern brakes. And the 05 chassis are great for that. Parts are everywhere. You can find stuff at local auto parts and Napa's and Stuff like that. Also, the center section of the frame doesn't nearly dip down as far as the Dodges do. Um, I also want to have a Cummins in it, mostly because that's what I like. They're simple to work on. You don't have to pull a cab to change parts on it. And uh, I work on them at work and Cummins certified, so I guess I'm kind of biased on that. Um, but I've already done a 12 valve swap in my jeep wrangler so i wanted to kind of up my game a little bit so i wanted to go six seven cummins but i stumbled across this truck and it was just such a good deal i couldn't pass it up um so i wanted to make it work if i could and it just simply wasn't as easy as i was ex hoping it would be to make the six seven power stroke work standalone um, i ended up speaking with a Ford electrical engineer and he said the way 
that the Ford protocol and CAN system was set up that um, you basically needed all the modules in communication for everything to work properly. And I didn't want all 19 or 20 modules in that truck. Uh, I want I want simple, I want reliable, I want good mileage, and I want easy to work on. And Power Stroke, although it has some of those, doesn't have all of those. And the Cummins checks all those boxes. So I couldn't make the Power Stroke work. So what I ended up doing was parting it out. And I ended up almost or tripling my money with parting everything out. The cab, the motor, transmission, transfer case. And I kept the frame and axles. Um, so that's a huge plus right there for me. Um, so what I ended up doing was I found this truck for a smoking good deal. And I went and picked it up. So this is a 2008 Dodge 2500 crew cab long bed on some bro wheels. It's on some American Force 20 by 12s with some 35 inch buckshots. Uh, I guess the story behind this truck was the guy had a couple of them and was selling them to fix his newer 2017 he had and put money back into his business. So I scooped this thing up for a crazy good deal. Um, I still have money left over, so that's awesome. And the plan for this is to keep the motor, the transmission, transfer case, and wheels and tires. And part out the rest and use that money to build the transmission. So this has the 6.7 Cummins in it. It has the VGT, it has a rebuilt VGT uh, turbo on it, which is what I wanted uh, because I want to be able to have exhaust brake. I like the modernness of it and who knows. I may down the road get rid of it, but I do plan on having compounds. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep that and keep the exhaust brake and then get like an S475 uh, and put on top. And then I'm gonna build the transmission accordingly. So this has the 68 RFE in it, which are known to be junk. And I guess the guy had transmission recently built. He said he put probably 10,000 miles on it and then lost fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, so, I'm gonna take the money that I get parting this truck out and use that to build a transmission. I still need to buy air management to run the airbags on and I'd like to get the truck here painted eventually. Uh, I got tiny amount of bubbles coming in on the roof. Um, that's the only rust spot in the truck. So I wanna get that repaired and the clear coat's peeling pretty bad and it has holes here under this tape where the guy had 90 style mirrors in it. So I need to get those holes filled. I want to get it repainted like a, a Ford blue jean blue color. Uh, but that'll be later, way later down the road. This truck has the pusher intake on it. It's got the grid heater delete. It has the banks upgraded intercooler piping it has brand new bilsteins all the way around with a three inch lift um, i've actually already sold the headlights and most of the door panels are good i mean each one i think has some sort of dent the bed's pretty much wrecked the tailgate's all kind of beat up so i'll get what i can out of this but Let's go ahead and do a quick cold start on it. And I'll throw the exhaust brake on just for giggles. Because I love the way it sounds. I believe it's got a five inch exhaust. It's been deleted and tuned. That's great. I just recently bought this cap off of eBay. It's super cool, it's nice, I like it. But the 
freaking logo doesn't line up. So when you put it on, and screw it in all the way, it doesn't line up. I was hoping it would be like this. But uh, I'm gonna contact the guy I got it from on eBay and see if I can get one that's correct. But if it's if that's how it's supposed to be, then I guess I'll just write that in the review that it doesn't actually line up. But super excited about this um, all I got left of the Ford is the cab sitting over there the guy is supposed to be coming this weekend to pick it up I literally sold everything and almost tripled my money <laughs> so it worked out you know I'm not rich by any means work full-time my wife works full-time we got three kids uh, so I pretty much only have a small fund to work with so parting this thing out got me a lot more money and that i can get a lot more stuff that i wanted but yeah the fuel system all is all that's left that i haven't sold so i mean if you're interested in that hit me up and uh we can try and make out a deal on that if you need it uh but yeah that's just a quick down and dirty update on what i've been working on so far hopefully next upload i make we will I'll actually start cutting this frame down on the truck and uh, getting that cradle installed, getting these axles cleaned up, and we'll actually get to fabricating. Um, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of on restriction until my uh, daughter gets a little bit older and my wife needs help inside, so, you know, it's no big deal. I got to help with that, but whenever I can get some time to break away and come out here and work on this i'll be sure to bring y'all along but uh yeah i appreciate y'all watching and i hope you stick around for the next one i will uh see y'all in the comments